Write a parts invoice. In Max Tracks, we have a service counter and a parts counter. The service counter is used to track repair orders for parts sold that are installed on a customer's vehicle. For parts sold over the counter for the customer to install, we write a parts invoice on the parts counter. Let's take a look. Click the parts counter icon on the toolbar to display all of our open parts invoices. We can write a cash parts invoice by clicking the write cash invoice icon on the left, not requiring us to enter a customer name, cancel, or we can write a parts invoice with the customer's information. So I'll click the write customer invoice button and here we enter the name to search for in our system. If the customer is not there, click the Add New button to start the Add a Customer wizard. Select a person or company, as this is how we would search for them. And next, we only need to enter their name to create a customer record. See the red asterisk? The red asterisk designates a required field. And next, we could fill the rest of this information in now or later. Click Next, Phones, and Next. Price Code, another required entry, defaults to A for the parts pricing level. Click Next. We don't have to add a vehicle for a parts invoice, so I'll just click the Finish button. I can add as much or as little customer information as I want in the Customer Wizard. I'll just fill the rest of the customer information in later, so I'll just click OK. And yes, I want to continue without adding a vehicle. And click the Select button down below with the new customer's name highlighted, or just double click on the name to start the parts invoice. In this Order Placed by field, we can select another name from the drop list if the customer record had additional people listed under the Drivers section of the customer record like a spouse or an employee for a commercial account. The primary customer name is the default. This name prints on this parts invoice. The salesperson defaults to whomever is logged into Maxtrax if security is activated, which my security is not turned on. So I will click the select button and choose my name as a salesperson. These names appear on this list because they're designated in their employee record as service writers, aka salespeople. Promise date and time can be selected here or left blank. And these are the labor and parts pricing levels, which can be different than what's selected as the defaults in the customer record. We'll just leave both at price A. Shipping information can be entered down here if your shop is shipping parts. The Ship Method field will be activated if we enter a date and then we can select from the drop list for our shipping method, number of cartons, and total number of packages. Click OK. I have the customer source as a required field in my setups, a pretty valuable piece of information to collect when you're budgeting for marketing. Click Select and OK. Parts are added above and labor is added below for things like machine shop labor or mounting tires on a set of rims. Click the Add Part button and we can add a part from our parts list, from an online catalog, from kits. Sublet labor you may be reselling is also selected in this upper section under this Add Part button. Since we treat sublet labor in Maxtrax much like a part, requiring the sublet labor purchase be entered into Maxtrax before we sell it to a customer and pay and post the parts invoice, especially if you're using the fully integrated accounting. Let's select a part from the part list. Highlight a part and note here we can right click and select price view at the bottom of this drop list to select price A, B, C, D, E, or F. If you want to select a price other than the default price level we selected at the beginning of this parts invoice. You may or may not have different price levels, but if you do, you would select a level before adding the part from this list to 
to your parts invoice. Let's say I chose price level C. Note the price changed here and then click the select button down below. I will get this confirm price change window, noting that the price level selected for this part is different than the customer's default price level. This warning is letting us know the customer is paying less than their default price level A. At this point, you can select to just use the price C as the selling price or click this checkbox and choose to show the difference in price as a discount. Let's do that and click OK. This is the part sales detail information screen. We have a similar detail screen for labor and sublet labor. This screen lists the part number, description, which can be edited at the invoice level, add-on charges that can be added or adjusted, and here is where we set the discounts sales discounts or warranty discounts, which are tracked separately in your financials. Discounts selected here would be listed on the parts invoice as a line item discount. This use matrix checkbox will apply a part price matrix to the cost of the part to generate the regular selling price for this part, which we have selected. Please see the part price matrix setup and review training video for more information. We can select another matrix other than the default matrix from here or uncheck the matrix altogether and select another price level, manufacturer list or cost from here. We can also use these spin buttons to the right of that drop list Watch the profit monitor in the lower left corner. As I click this spin button, the selling price increases or decreases in increments of one percentage point of profit at a time. Click on the profit monitor and this profitability window opens. Here is the average cost of the part based on the cost we paid for that part in stock. The base cost which is the last highest price we've paid for this part is used to calculate the selling price if you're using a part price matrix. Close. Current part status tells us our quantity available. We need to get this part coming, any quantity on order already, and from which vendor under the details button. Close. At this point, Need to order would tell us there's another parts invoice or repair order open with this part number selected on it that we still need to send in a parts order for. And here we can see what other job this part is already reserved for. And the customer in invoice number it is reserved for under the select button. And last, quantity can be edited here. The vast majority of the time, nothing needs to be adjusted on this screen except the quantity, as long as you have a part price structure for this part already set up in the part record. Most shops have the part price matrix set in the part master record. However, as you can see, there are lots of options to set the selling price for your parts to maximize profitability at the time of writing up the invoice for your customer. And click OK. Parts and or labor from kits, as well as sublet labor, can be added from this Add Part button. And the labor from the kit would be listed below. And for any shop labor, the Add Labor button has available labor service from list or from kits. Labor also has a sales detail information screen where the labor description can be edited, a technician can be assigned, Add-on charges can be added or edited. Discounts on the right, just like on the parts sales detail information screen. And the flat rate hours for the tech and build hours for the customer can be changed down here. Click OK. With the cursor in the upper parts section, from the options button, we can enter a return for parts or sublets or refund a core charge. 
the show Invoice Profit is here. And we can view a technician's clock in, clock out history if there is labor on the parts invoice and the tech is using the job clock. Highlight the labor section and then click the options button to refund labor or assign a technician. These blue links on the left take you to different sections of the parts invoice. Click warranty to select a warranty specific to this parts invoice. Click notes to enter notes to be saved within this parts invoice, which you can select to be printed or not if this checkbox is checked. The miscellaneous link is where we can change the salesperson, select another sales tax rate, enter a resale number or a purchase order number, or edit the invoice date. We can enter an invoice level discount for parts and or labor, or change the miscellaneous supply charge. And last, shipping information can be edited here as well if you're using that part of the program. From the summary link, we can view a summary of each category total. And the parts on order view lets us know what parts have been ordered from which vendor and when. Please see the restock parts training video for details on ordering parts from a repair order or a parts invoice. I'll click the OK Save button in the lower right corner, pay this parts invoice, select my method of payment, apply payment, and finish. A cash invoice works exactly the same way. We just skip the customer information section in the Write a Parts Invoice Wizard. And this concludes the lesson on Write a Parts Invoice.